Ahoy! Today is the 1st of March 2020 and I'm currently at Scotch Corner um, in the north of England. Um, I'm just charging my car up. I thought it was a good opportunity to give you a bit of an update as to how I've been getting on. Um, so if I'm honest there hasn't been a great deal of change. There's maybe some things I need to confess to a little, but um, there hasn't been a great deal of change. My mouth is still quite dry and I am still finding it quite difficult to eat. I am re slowly regaining some of my taste, but it is incredibly slow, very frustrating and, and taste is just really, really subtle. If I eat a lot of something that has a taste that I can taste, um, it's reasonably quick before that uh, taste disappears. So it's, um, it is very, very frustrating uh, to start tasting something and then for that taste to kind of fade and disappear a little. Um, so anyway, I'm in Scotch Corner because I'm coming home. Um, I went up to Dundee uh, with some work colleagues to go and uh, deliver, uh, well, actually one of my colleagues actually delivered a keynote at a hackers conference up in Dundee and so shout out to him and everyone else that was there to support it um, and then uh, we had like a, a little hack day on uh, the Saturday as well so we've been supporting that and I did the park run in Dundee which um, is very muddy very cold and uh, it's it's not as steep as I think it could be in Scotland, but it does have some hills in it. And they, they were, uh, the run briefing, they made lots of sort of, oh my God, it's a hill. Um, but it actually wasn't that bad. Um, I think it would be nicer to do it when it's summer and there isn't quite so much mud. Um, I got absolutely caked in mud um, by the time I got back to my hotel. I was, uh, I looked quite filthy. Um, but yeah, it was it was good. I thought I was going to be quite quick. I was a bit slower than I normally am over 5k, but that's because you had to walk a lot of it for fear of falling over in the mud. So my fitness is slowly coming back. I am only really doing park runs still at the moment, so 5k. But I'm not I'm not walking normally. Uh, I am running most of those park runs, so uh, that's pretty good. Um, I am having some trouble with my back. So I think I spent quite a lot of time in, in hospital on a bed and then even when I returned home I was still in bed a lot of the time and that has done something to my back uh, which means sort of my mid to lower back is uh, occasionally quite painful and it, it seems to set off my uh, the tingling sensation in my legs and I explained while I was in hospital I, my, my right thigh had gone almost entirely numb. I mean, you could stick a knitting needle through it and I wouldn't feel it. That sensation hasn't really come back and I think it might be because of um, uh, because of my back um, and I think, uh, you know, I'm putting some pain-killing uh, topical gel on there to try and relieve that pain, but that tingling sensation is getting worse um, and the numbness is getting worse. I, I literally sometimes find it difficult to walk because while I'm walking, I'll suddenly get this electrical sensation that just goes down my legs and makes my legs feel like they're about to give way. Um, so that's not ideal and that doesn't appear to be getting better. Um, work are at the moment trying to work out how they can support me with that because I'm traveling or commuting in on a train when I need to be in London in, um, in regular commuter class and that's fine uh, I don't really have a great deal of problem with that other than the fact that oftentimes it's standing room only and I sort of buckle up like an origami swan stuck in uh, a seat without the ability to stand up or stretch which means when we do arrive into London um, I oftentimes need to spend sort of 10 15 sometimes 20 minutes just waiting for my legs to recover so that I can, I can actually walk to where I need to be. And it's it's an odd thing. Um, you would imagine if you can't feel your legs, then uh, you know there'd be numbness, but it's actually quite painful uh, as you try and sort of 
uh, get them moving again. Um, so that's not great. And the other thing that has kind of continued, and I am getting some support for, for it, uh, a very kind counsellor from Macmillan, uh, Sally, um, she has been helping me and she's, uh, you know, I've had six sessions with her now. Um, and just trying to work through some of the mental states that I'm going through uh, and some of the recovery that I'm going through because I think while the physical side you know will come true eventually the emotional side is just taking a little bit longer than I'd hoped but also I'm kind of stuck in my ways in some sense with regards to the way in which I my brain functions and the way in which I solve problems and I think this is just a problem that it's not used to having to solve and the way in which I'm you know attempting to solve it is not working uh, so I've also reached out to the very kind John Laval who has given me a couple of really interesting insights into little tricks that I can use for NLP Duncan has also been supporting me as well um, he doesn't know it, but he's a really massively positive influence in my life, and I really appreciate that. And also, uh, Dale as well has been uh, helping just give a lot of moral and medical support, which is really awesome. And finally, my family, and most importantly, Sasha, has been giving me lots of advice and uh, a place to go and uh, feel safe, really. And uh, that's not, you know, when I'm out, uh, working or when I'm out and about uh, it can feel a bit lonely it can feel like uh, I'm going through this on my own but it's really important to have Sasha there and my family my girls supporting me and the boys supporting me through uh, my rather frustrating recovery um, I will get there it's just um, feels like a marathon not that I've ever run a marathon yet but feels like you know, the beginning part felt quite easy and it felt like you were breaking the back of it and then there's the middle bit where you're kind of going through it and actually it's the last five miles or so which are really the sort of back-breaking, really frustrating component because it feels like you've done the majority of the work and you've still got such a long way to go. Um, yeah, I'm like I say, I'm struggling to eat, I'm still losing weight which is really frustrating. Um, I'd like to shout out to Hugh and Meredith and Noah who very kindly uh, let me stay over in Edinburgh on my way back. So last night, Saturday to Sunday night, I stayed over at theirs. We played some Jackbox and a couple of little games and they very kindly put on uh, a, a nice meal for me. So we had some fish, I think there was some steak as well and a lovely broth which really warmed me up and kept me warm. I have been struggling while I've been uh, staying in hotels with keeping warm. I feel warm, inverted commas. I know the room is warm. I put the room up to sort of 30 degrees at one point because I was just feeling so cold. And I knew the room was warm, but my body just was not warming up. My fingers, my feet and my core were just freezing cold. And it wasn't especially cold in, in, um, in Dundee. I mean, it was four degrees which is cold, but it's not like crazy, crazy cold. Uh, I shouldn't have felt as cold as I did, which was, um, yeah, like I say, it was frustrating. Anyway, I'm gonna now set off. My car is telling me uh, we can go. I should make it back all in one go now. And the car is saying I will have 5% battery when I return. So uh, yeah, heading back now and um, keep watching. I'll make another update in a little while, all right. Toodaloo. Bye.